Hello, and welcome back to most of you. Thanks for tuning in. We have a really fun turn to baller on a budget deck tech video. Budget turn to, oh yes. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to run this deck, how to get that turn to in, and uh, go over everything that's in it and how it all pieces together. Also, I wanna give a shout out to Kaysen Zekayo for helping put this deck together. Without him, this deck would not exist, so shout out to Kaysen. Let's just jump into it. First off, for our land base, we are going to be running only forests. Why do you have an island on the playmat? We'll get right to that in just a moment, but let me go over the deck first. We have 20 forests total. Very simple, very basic. Now let's get into oh, what spells are all up in here. I will include a sideboard at the end of the video for anyone who wants to stick around. And uh, throughout this video, I'll explain exactly how to get this turn to win. Lana War Elves. If you're running green, you are more than certainly going to be running some kind of ramp in your deck. So we're going to cover all the ramp cards first. Our very first one is Lanaware Elves or Elvish Mystic. They're basically the exact same card with a different name. We are going to add a green mana to our mana pool by tapping Lanaware Elves. Total, we're going to run is four. Next up, we have Arbor Elf. And I'm sure quite a few of you are already thinking, I bet I know what's next. And you're probably right. Arbor Elf, it is a one drop. By tapping it, we untap target forest. Very simple, very basic. We are going to need him. We are running a total of four Arbor Elves. Utopia Sprawl. That's right, you guessed it. We have four Utopia Sprawls. It only costs one green mana to cast. Enchant Forest, as Utopia Sprawl enters the battlefield, choose a color. Whenever Enchanted Forest is tapped for mana, its controller adds one mana of the chosen color to his or her mana pool. Believe it or not, one of those is going to be blue. Utopia Sprawl. We are running a total of four Utopia Sprawls in this deck. Courser of Crufix. It's a three drop. Play with the top card of your library revealed. You may play the top card of your library if it's a land card. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. It's a deuce four. Really cool card, but we're not really too concerned about that one life. We're more concerned about playing with the top card of our library revealed. And if it's a forest, we can drop it onto the battlefield. That's pretty neat. We're trying to get to our cards as quickly as we can, and this is going to help us go through them more efficiently, I should say. We're running a total of two Courser of Crufix, one of the more expensive cards in the entire deck. Karamadra's Acolyte. Real cool name. Four Dropper. Human Druid. We're going to tap it. Add an amount of green mana to your mana pool. I'm sorry, to your mana pool. Equal to your devotion to green. Each green mana in the mana cost of permanence you control counts toward your devotion to green. Definitely going to help us ramp up we're not always going to get a turn to win. That's just the way life is, guys. You're not always going to hit the lottery. All right? But when you do, holy smokes, your opponent is not going to like it. We're running a total of four Karametras Acolytes in this deck. Very cheap card. Most of these cards are very inexpensive. Scourge of Scalavale. It is a three-dropper. Trample. Mostly for its trample, per, for its trample ability. That's why it's in the deck or mechanic. Scourge of Skull of Veil enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. Tapping it, sacrifice another creature. Put a number of plus one plus one counters on Scourge of Skull of Veil, equal to the sacrificed creature's toughness. Definitely, we got a big old dummy Hydra sitting out here. We're just gonna go ahead, sacrifice that sucker, and we're gonna throw it on top of Scourge of Skull of Veil, making this thing just ridiculously large. Not one of our combo pieces we're gonna need. We're running a total of two Scourge of Skull of Veil. Colonian Hydra. This has to be probably one of my favorite artworks on a Hydra card, and my favorite Hydra with its ability. And I mean, just everything about this card I just love. It is a five dropper. Trample. Colonian Hydra enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on it. Whenever Colonian Hydra attacks, double the number of plus one plus one counters on each creature you control. Now that's really cool because it's going to work in combination with a couple other cards here. Colonian Hydra, definitely one of my favorites. This thing's going to get big and it's going to get big quick with the aid of Hydra Broodmaster. Neither of which are going to get our turn to win, but they are just sweet Hydras when you combine the two. Hydra Broodmaster, it's six drop, 
XX and a green mana. Monstrosity X. If this creature isn't monstrous, put X plus some plus one counters on it and it becomes monstrous. Quite a few people that are new to the game, they get really confused about the XX cost. Well, it's really simple, actually. Now, you do have to pay each one for X, but how that works, and I'll try to explain this as easy as possible. You tap two green... Let's just say you tap two lands. That is going to pay for each one of these X's. So it becomes one, one. You pay two. So let's say you pay a total of four. Then it's a two, two. Let's say you pay a total of six, three, three. Okay? So when Hydra Broodmaster becomes monstrous, put X, 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 green Hydra creature token on the battlefield. So if we paid six, we would then put three, two, two, green Hydra creature tokens onto the battlefield. I hope that cleared up a few things. Because that card can be really confusing. I know as a new player it was confusing to me. When Hydra Broodmaster becomes monstrous, put X, 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 green creature, Hydra tokens onto the battlefield. Think about that with Colonian Hydra, because whenever... Colonian Hydra attacks, double the number of plus one, plus one counters on each creature you control. That would be nasty to combo with Hydra Broodmaster because he's just splashing down a bunch of these tokens. Pretty neat card. We are running a total of two Hydra Broodmasters. Mist Cutter Hydra. Now this is one card that we will need for that turn to win. It is X and a green mana. Mist Cutter Hydra can't be countered. May one of the main reasons in is he is in this deck is because he can't be countered. But, even bigger reason, he has haste. But what makes him even better is he has protection from blue. Mist Cutter Hydra enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. What makes him even better is he's ridiculously inexpensive. He is a great, great card, and he's just dirt cheap. I just can't understand why, honestly. But we are going to run a total of four Mist Cutter Hydras in this deck. He is going to be the meat and potatoes. We are going to need him to get that turn to win. And I'll cover that in just a second. Genesis Hydra. X and a, and a two uh, for us. When you cast Genesis Hydra, reveal the top X cards of your library. You may put a non-land permanent card with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield, then shuffle the rest into your library. Genesis Hydra enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. This card's really fun because it can help us get to certain cards we need in order to seal the game and win. Basically, that's why Genesis Hydra's up in here. Plus, he's a big old Hydra, and we can get him pretty large pretty quickly. We're going to run only a total of two in the main board of Genesis Hydra. Next up is Rancor. Love this card. You guys have seen this make numerous appearances in my turn two, turn three win deck decks. Rancor is just amazing. He was actually supposed to come out printed... Uh, casting cost of two, one colorless and a forest, but someone made a mistake and he just came out the printing press with just one, and he's forever since been a staple. Enchant Creature. Enchanted Creature gets plus two, plus zero, and has trample. When Rancor is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return Rancor to its owner's hand. We are running a total of four Rancors. Now, I think it's clear why we have the good old island out here freed from the real this card is going to be a necessity for our turn to win it's a three drop enchant menorah enchant creature for one island tap enchanted creature for one island on tap enchanted creature awesome card we're running a total of four so let me go ahead and piece this together really quick and i'll show you guys exactly what you're going to need for that turn to win and then i'll go over the sideboard and I'll show you how to do the turn two win. So your first starting hand, or your opening hand, well, it's going to look something along the lines of this. Give or take a card. Um, you're going to have an extra card, but these are the cards you're going to need necessary to get that going. So we're going to drop our forest. Turn one, we play the forest. Tap it. We are going to play Arbor Elf. That's turn one. That's it. Turn two, we're going to untap our forest. We got our Arbor Elf out here. We're going to drop another forest right here. We are then going to take a look at our hand. We are going to need Utopia Sprawl. We just are. So we're going to pay the one. And we're going to cast Utopia Sprawl on this forest over here. Now remember, as Utopia Sprawl enters the battlefield, choose a color. We are going to choose 
blue. Whenever Enchanted Forest is tapped for mana, its controller adds one mana of the chosen color to his or her mana pool. Absolutely. So now we're going to tap up the Utopia Sprawl in Forest, and that's going to create us an island in a forest right there. That's two mana we have out. Then we're going to use Arbor Elf. We are going to untap target forest. That would be this. And that's going to create us two more once we tap it. We're going to tap it. Now we have four. That's two forests and two islands out that we can use. We are then going to use three of that to cast Freed from the Real. We are going to throw it onto or enchant our Arbor Elf. With that one extra island we have, we are going to use that to untap, untap Enchanted Creature. Shwink! We are going to untap our Arbor Elf. Then we are going to go ahead and tap our Arbor Elf. Untapping Utopia Sprawl and Forest. That just freed up more mana. Now we have three. Do we see where this is going? We can pay that one island from here. We tap this. Untap Enchanted Creature. We're going to untap. This is going to create us unlimited mana. Once we have that unlimited mana and we decide, okay, I think I'll go with 40 mana total is what I want, we are going to slap down Mist Cutter Hydra. Remember, Mist Cutter Hydra cannot be countered. It has haste and protection from blue. Mist Cutter Hydra enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. Let's say we did 40, so this comes out as a 39 39 when he hits the battlefield. Can't be countered. And he has protection from blue. This early on turn two, it's going to be really hard for any deck to do anything with this. Now, of course, you're going to have uh, your cards. You know, there's going to be hate out there. You got black, you got white. There's those cards that can remove it. But for right now, this sucker's out in the battlefield. We're also going to, let's say we want to tap up a bit more. We need one more mana. Bam. Rencor. We throw Rencor on him. He has haste. We are going to attack and swing with our Miscutter Hydra and Rancor on him. This thing is nasty. He now has Trample. Turn two, we're dealing like 40 plus damage. And you can pick whatever number you want because you have an unlimited mana here, guys. Good game. Shake, walk away. <laughs> How fun is that, huh? And it's so simple. It's so simple, guys. It's so simple. All right, here's really quick. Uh, just... What we're going to have in the sideboard, forgive me for uh, the backgrounds here. We have four fogs. Fog is simple. Creatures attack and block as normal, but none deal any damage. Maybe we need to buy some time. That's basically what fogs in here for. We're going to run four naturalizes, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Maybe something's pesky and bothering us. And then we're going to run two additional Scourge of Skull Avails in the sideboard. And we're going to also run a Polokronos World Eater, just because he's sweet. He's got a, he's a four, four drop, and he's got Monstrosity X. Uh, when World Eater becomes monstrous, it deals X damage, divided as you choose, among any number of target creatures your opponents control. Each of those creatures deals damage equal to its power to, pro, uh, to Polokronos. Pretty sweet card. I thought it'd be fun to throw in the sideboard. And we have another two copies of Genesis Hydra in the sideboard. That is the complete deck. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was a heck of a lot of fun to throw it all together. Again, thank you, Kaysen, uh, and my buddy Chris over at Warzone Matrix for all making this deck come together. If you guys aren't already subscribed, make sure you do that. As always, PLA.